And now to a News for Jack's I-Team investigation, Crimes of the Cloth. So our I-Team has combed through nearly a thousand pages of documents revealing years of sexual abuse claims and the birth of a baby fathered by a priest with the Diocese of St. Augustine. But families were never warned as more complaints of abuse came in and were seemingly ignored. I-Team investigator Kelly Wiley has spent months working on her investigation. Kelly? Well, since the early 90s, at least four women have come to the Diocese of St. Augustine with stories of how now deceased priest William Malone allegedly molested, fondled, and got one woman pregnant. The abuse occurred in the 80s. One victim, just 11 years old at the time. Now the diocese records on the abuse have been released to state investigators showing then Bishop John Snyder and other church leaders knew that priest abusing children in the early 90s, but said nothing. Men they were told to trust, but trained them in a sacred space. Secret church files show top leaders of the Diocese of St. Augustine failed to tell police about allegations its priest molested Jacksonville children. The church historically hid it. The church only exposing most priest crimes years after they died. But the whole truth still hasn't been told. The truth is hiding in secret files the diocese has kept for years. Records they exclusively had access to until court orders forced the diocese to hand them over to state investigators. I wasn't given the church a choice. They were gonna provide me these records or I was gonna go get them. Now we're telling you the whole story, starting in 1980, when Reverend William Malone, a visiting priest from Ireland, was assigned to Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Jacksonville. In an internal report from 2019, Church investigators detailed how Reverend Malone repeatedly molested a young girl during the sacrament of confession. The girl was only 11 years old. Diocese investigators said one of the times Father Malone touched her, he pointed and said, be good or the devil is going to get you. Records show more than 10 years later, the girl told her mother about the abuse. When, when then we will have- Diocese records detail her parents met with then Bishop of the Diocese of St. Augustine, Bishop John Snyder, in 1991. But records show the church dismissed the allegations then as conjecture, saying the victim was unwilling to meet with the diocesan officials. But in January 1991, despite Bishop Snyder dismissing allegations Malone molested an 11-year-old girl and not reporting the allegations to police, he transferred Malone to a different church within the diocese, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church in Palm Coast, Florida. The next year, the diocese transferred him to a pair in Long Island, and eventually he went back to the diocese in Ireland. In a letter from August 1993 to Bishop Snyder, church leaders in Ireland wrote that while Reverend Malone couldn't remember abusing children, he accepted something happened. The omission by Father Malone is not the only bombshell in the letter. The letter itself was to discuss child support payments. To a young parishioner, Father Malone got pregnant in the late 1980s while an assistant pastor at Sacred Heart. Records on Sacred Heart letterhead show the payments split between the diocese and the Holy Ghost Father's Order of Long Island. The payments to Father Malone's child began in January 1992 and continued until 2010. Despite what church leaders knew, Allegations against Father Malone were not reported to law enforcement. That 11-year-old victim, now an adult, came forward again in 2003. She wrote a letter telling the new bishop, Victor Gallione, she was hurt not just once, but twice by the way it was handled. The diocese's own records show the victim met with Bishop Victor Gallione in 2003, but that the diocesan review board was never called to investigate the allegations. And again, 
neither were police. It was not until 2018, the third time she spoke up, 27 years after her parents told Bishop Snyder that the diocese reported the allegations to police and its own parishioners. But the diocese did not tell parishioners that they were told about the allegations against Father Malone decades ago, or that they for years paid child support to a child he fathered while a priest at Sacred Heart. Diocese records also showed other victims had come forward over the years with stories of how Father Malone molested them. In 1994, a woman's husband reported she was molested by Father Malone during counseling sessions with the priest in 1982. She was 15 at the time. Police reports say she was molested once a week for six weeks by Father Malone. The church, again, did not report the allegations. That woman didn't come forward again until 2019. The same year, a third victim came forward, telling the diocese she was molested in 1981 at Sacred Heart Catholic Church by Father Malone. We wanted to hear the church's explanation for how these cases were handled, but church officials at the Diocese of St. Augustine refused to sit down with our team to talk about the records. The prosecutor who led the Florida Attorney General's investigation into historical sex abuse in the Florida churches did. So if it was now and you guys heard that a victim had gone to the bishop and said, this happened to me, and they told this person, it's a conjecture, you know, nothing we can do, that person would be facing criminal charges. They'd be facing an investigation to determine if criminal charges existed, whether it be for interfering with an investigation, whether it be for either witness tampering, evidence, uh, manipulating evidence, whether it be for failure to report. There's a number of things that could apply in these types of cases. But we're talking about crimes here that need to be reported to law enforcement. And that was another problem with the church. They weren't doing it. A lot of the times it looks like they're it, conducting their own investigation before they even take it to police. Are you speaking about now or before? Or? or just what some of these records lay out, that they were doing their own investigation and then possibly taking it to police. Is that uh, problematic? I, I, yeah, no, I, yes it is. Uh, and that's one of the things I tried to communicate to the church and that I would recommend to them that they need to do. They have their own what they call diocesan review boards, that when there's a complaint, these diocesan review boards uh, will look at, and it's members of the of the diocese, whether it's church members, whether it's former police officers, even former prosecutors in some cases sit, sit on these boards. Um, and they will look at them and they will investigate and they will recommend to the bishop what the bishop should do in regards to that person. The problem is diocesan review boards don't have any criminal powers. Law enforcement has criminal powers. So the diocesan review boards, and I, I've tried to make this clear, they don't need to be investigating this and then deciding if it goes to law enforcement. The minute the allegation is made, they need to notify law enforcement and make sure law enforcement doesn't mind them taking a look. The church is incapable of policing itself. The church should not be relying on the church or diocesan review boards to police whether or not crimes are being committed against children or anything else. That is for law enforcement to do. In November, the Office of Statewide Prosecutors released the findings of its two-year investigation into every Catholic diocese in Florida. In the report, investigators say they received no tip about current conduct inside the church or of children in imminent danger. But in total, the report listed 97 priests credibly accused of sexual abuse in Florida churches, including Reverend William Malone. But what the report did not detail was any of the abuse experienced by Jacksonville children or the cover-up by the Diocese of St. Augustine leaders. What happened to the victims of Father Malone is a snapshot of the history of the Diocese of St. Augustine and how they handled allegations of sex abuse against his priest. And it's an even smaller look at Catholic churches in Florida as a whole. Investigators say possibly the biggest issue facing leaders of Florida's Catholic churches, even now, is openness. In that letter to Bishop Gallion in 2003, the 11-year-old who Father Malone first abused shared how the abuse and the cover-up left her faith. She wrote, I was abused by a man of God and ignored by men of God who were supposed to protect their flock. 
And our investigation is not over. Church records revealed the background stories for so many of the vague announcements about credible allegations against priests at the Diocese of St. Augustine over the years. We are detailing them all in our story on newsforjacks.com. If you have experienced or know about allegations of sexual abuse, not just in the Catholic Church, but any institution, you can still report those allegations to the Florida Attorney General or to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We're gonna link you to that on newsforjax.com. And if you have a story you wanna share with us, we provided the direct link to contact us by emailing iteam at newsforjax.com. Kelly, in your investigation, you said the Diocese of St. Augustine declined an on-camera interview. This is something you've been working on for weeks. Can you share that process with our viewers? Yes, we reached out to the diocese in January asking for an interview on these records that we'd obtained from the Attorney General. We continued to request an interview even up to this week, but the diocese ultimately decided not to sit down with us. We also sent a couple of questions, but the diocese said the Attorney General report that we were provided in the diocese audit summary that is posted on their website are clear on their practices and procedures. To be transparent, our goal was for them to add any context that we might have been missing, but we didn't get that opportunity. The invitation, however, still stands to the diocese if they wish to speak with us. All right, Kelly Wiley, appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the report.